Afrika Mashariki tuwezeshe kuishi kwa amani tutimize na malengo yetu jumuiya yetu sote tulilinde tuajibike tuimarike umoja wetu ni nguzo yetu Morning unit holders, guests and colleagues. My name is Jude Aniko, the principal officer of Britam Asset Managers, and I'll be chair of this meeting. It is my pleasure to welcome you to the 16th annual general meeting of the Britam Unit Trust Funds, namely Britam Money Market Fund, Britam Balance Fund, Britam Board Plus Fund, and Britam Equity Fund. Before we commence our meeting, I'd like to call upon Ms. Judy Kitonga to lead us in a word of prayer. Thank you, Chair. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning in the name of Jesus. With thanksgiving in our hearts, we say thank you for this opportunity to be able to gather again uh, this year for the AGM. We say thank you for you've preserved us, you've sustained us, O oh Lord. We want to say thank you for every member and every family represented this morning. And how we pray as we begin this meeting that you give us wisdom, guidance, and <coughs> guidance and direction that can, can only come from thee. We pray that you'll be with us from the start of the meeting to the end of the, the meeting. And we pray all this, trusting and believing in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you, uh, Ms. Kitonga, for the prayer. Dear unit holders, we are now in the third year of living with COVID-19, which, which is now being referred to as an endemic. In as much as we have seen the government remove restrictions on, move, uh, on movement, gathering, and wearing of masks, I would like to highlight that the virus is still alive and spreading fast within and outside our borders, and hence why, for your safety, and having received a no objection from the Capital Markets Authority, we have proceeded to hold this meeting via electric means. Unit holders, I would like to, to take this opportunity to introduce the management team and professional advisors of the fund present here with me today. First, I would like to start with Ms. Winifred Jumba, our company secretary. Morning, shareholders. I also would like uh, to introduce Mr. John Junge, Senior Manager, Third Party Portfolio. I would like to introduce our Chief Financial Officer, uh, Mr. Moses Kangethe. I would also like to introduce our custodian from Stanchat, Ms. Juliet Kiare Mugambi. Our trustee from KCB Bank, Ms. Florence Nduba. Our auditor from Pricewaterhouse and Coopers, Mr. Daniel Kilu. And lastly, our sign language interpreter, Ms. Fiona Mueresa. I would also like to acknowledge the presence of the executive management team of Britam who are also following the proceeding virtually and thank them for their dedicated service and commitment to the funds and the unit holders. I also like to take this opportunity to acknowledge the support provided by image registrars for their work towards making this meeting, uh, electronic meeting a success. Unit holders, touching on the 2021 performance, this will be presented to you in the fund manager's report. Looking at our strategy for Britam for 2021-2025, 20, 
On 12th April 2022, Britam Holdings launched their new EPIC One Britam Experience Strategy to all staff across all countries we operate in. With this announcement, Britam also announced a new organization structure or a target operating model which aims to transform Britam Group to a lean and agile organization with fewer reporting line and placing the customer at the center of all our operations. So this new structure will reposition the group to be better placed to address the ever-changing needs of you, our customers, as well as enable us to penetrate new emerging markets. The new strategy is all about delighting the customer by putting their needs at the center of everything we do. Our customers will experience one Britam. We will deploy customer insights and data analytics to understand their needs and provide solutions they want. This, will, uh, this we will achieve by leveraging our people, technology, culture, and enabling our partners to deliver meaningful interactions and satisfying experiences. Unit holders, as I conclude my opening uh, remarks, I would, like, I would once again like to thank you for taking time to attend this annual general meeting. We are honored by your presence, and it is our hope that you shall derive great value from, this, uh, from the discussions we shall hold in today's meetings. With those few remarks, I shall now call upon the Secretary to ascertain whether there's a quorum for this meeting. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I would like to confirm that we have the required quorum for this meeting. As per the members who have registered to attend, we do have a mem uh, the fund type British American Balance Fund, where we have 92.41% registration. British American Bond Plus Fund, where we have 39.49%. British American Equity Fund, where we have 90.09% and British American Money Market Fund, where we have 10.5% registration. Chairman, I do confirm that we have a quorum to convene this meeting. Thank you. Thank you. A quorum being present, I declare the meeting to be properly con convened and duly constituted. I would like to call upon the Secretary to read the notice conven convening the meeting. Thank you, Chair. The notice of the annual general meeting was published on our website and also shared with unit holders via email and SMS. May I request the unit holders to take the notice of the meeting as read? The highlights of the notice are, one, to read the notice convening the meeting, to receive, consider, and if deemed fit, adopt the annual report and financial statements for the year ended 31st December 2021, together with the auditor's report thereon, to transact any other business of the, un of the Britam Unit Trust funds of which due notice has been received. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Ms. Jumba. I'll now pro proceed to introduce our investment manager, Mr. John Junge, to present to you the report for the year ended 31st December 2021. Uh, thank you, Chair. Good morning, unit holders. As mentioned by, my, by the Chair, my name is George Njunge. I'm the Senior Manager, Third Party Portfolios at Britam Asset Managers. It is my pleasure to join you this morning uh, for this AGM. I will proceed to give a brief presentation on our Britam Asset Managers and the fund manager's report for the year under review ended 31st December 2021. The report will cover the economic overview, market outlook, and fund performance as it relates to the funds and the investment environment. So let's start with a brief on uh, Britam Asset Managers. Uh, we are a subsidiary of Britam Holdings PLC. Britam Asset Managers was incorporated in April 2004 and started operations in 2006 to provide 
quality fund management and investment advisory services to both individual and institutional investors. So since then, the company has grown remarkably to become an influential player in the financial services sector and currently manages uh, 224 billion Kenya shillings in Kenya and 814 billion uh, Uganda shillings in Uganda. And these numbers are as at March 2022. So the company offered, offers its clients a wide variety of products and investment solutions. Britam Asset Managers is among 27 fund management companies in Kenya, offering investment solutions for both retail and corporate clients. Uh, we have over six, 70 skilled staff who are serving in various capacities. Uh, the company also has an executive committee managing the day-to-day -day operations uh, who are governed by a board of directors. So looking at the various products and services that we offer, we have three major categories being uh, retail and corporate, institutional and real estate. Uh, under retail, we have unit trust funds. Uh, for instance, the four unit trust funds for which we are having this AGM uh, being money market, equity, balanced, and bond plus funds. We also have wealth management and uh, advisory. Under institutions, we manage pension schemes, endowment funds, and gratuity funds. And under real estate, we do development property advisory. We also do income property advisory, property investment strategies, property asset management, and uh, real estate research. So looking at the ownership structure of Britam Holdings, uh, of which Britam Asset Managers is a subsidiary, uh, we see that the biggest uh, shareholder is Africa Invest with about 17.5%. We have EH Venture Capital Kenya uh, with 16%. And maybe just to mention, the biggest shareholder as Africa Invest is actually a consortium uh, comprising of uh, the German Investment Development Corporation, uh, the French uh, and Netherlands Development Finance Company. Uh, then we have EH Venture Capital. We have Swiss Re, which is uh, the biggest uh, insurance company globally. We have our local national social security fund. We have the IFC, which is a subsidiary of the World Bank. And then we have uh, other investors who individually hold less than 10% shareholding each, but collectively have 32.6%. Now, going to the markets and economy review, we start with our local economy, where uh, we see it's a story of post-pandemic economic recovery in 2021. So growth improved to 7.5% in 2021, uh, and this is an improvement from uh, the contraction of 0.3% in 2020. So the removal of strict COVID-19 control measures resulted in recovery in business activity for the key drivers of the economy, such as transport, accommodation, manufacturing, and trade sectors. We are projecting a growth of about 5.7% for the year 2022. Uh, looking at the exchange rates, uh, it's, we've seen the Kenya shilling generally depreciate against the US dollar. Uh, so the depreciation in the year 2021 of the shilling against the dollar was uh, by 3.4%, uh, which was a bit better as compared to the year 2020, where the shilling depreciated uh, against the dollar at 7.2%. In terms of the outlook, we expect the shilling to remain under pressure largely due to increased imports as demand after the pandemic has picked up. And then higher global oil prices and uh, elevated inflation locally will also contribute to putting the shilling under pressure. 
looking at inflation, uh, we see that there was generally rising inflation in the year 2021, and uh, this trend was largely on the back of higher food and fuel prices. Uh, again, we also saw low rainfall and a global in, in and a rise in global oil prices uh, after the pandemic year of 2020. Looking forward, we see uh, inflationary pressure is expected to remain elevated and to range near the upper target of the central bank's range uh, for health inflation, which is between 2.5% and 7.5%. Uh, looking at interest rates, we see that rates were generally rising in the year 2021, uh, and this was due to tighter liquidity conditions in the market and a higher government bor domestic borrowing appetite. Uh, in terms of outlook, we expect uh, the upward pressure on interest rates to remain in the year as the market illiquidity persists, and this is coupled with elevated domestic borrowing uh, driven by government exposure. Uh, looking at uh, equities market, uh, we can see from the graph that uh, equities have been generally volatile uh, over the years with some ups and downs. For the year under review, there was a rebound in the first half of 2021, uh, followed by a decline in the second half. So the rebound was due to resumption in economic activity, which resulted in an improved macroeconomic environment. As for outlook, we expect the volatility in equities to persist uh, in the year 2022 on account of heightened political risk due to the upcoming general elections. Uh, monetary tightening uh, in global markets, uh, both of, of which point to outflows from the stock market. Then going to the investment report, we start with the Britam Money Market Fund, uh, which is a fund that invests in high yielding fixed income securities uh, in line with the investment mandate. So for the year under review 2021, we saw an increased exposure to treasury securities uh, from 42% to almost 60%, uh, coupled with a reduced exposure to corporate securities. Uh, in terms of performance for the year under review, we see that the average uh, yield, net yield was at 8%, but uh, looking at a longer perspective of six years, we see that the six-year six year annualized yield was at about 9.1%. Going to the Bond Plus Fund, uh, again, this is a fund which invests both in long-term and short-term uh, fixed income securities in line with its investment mandate. And uh, what we can see from the two graphs is that the fund has predominantly invested in government securities, being treasury bonds, uh, at a weight of 79% in 2020 and 76.5% in 2021. Uh, looking at the performance, for Bond Plus Fund, for the year 2021, average yield was at 5.7%, and the six-year annualized yield is at 8.4%. Uh, next, we look at uh, the Balanced Fund, uh, which offers exposure to both fixed income securities uh, and equities securities with long-term moderate risk. So we can see that the biggest exposure uh, for the fund over the two years has been equities. Uh, in terms of performance, uh, due to uh, the exposure to equities which have been volatile, uh, we can see that performance has also had ups and downs. For the year 2021, the return was negative 2.5% and the six year annualized return is negative 2.3%. Uh, then going to equities, once again we see the biggest exposure in the Britam Equity Fund uh, is 
equities being at 45% uh, percent and 43% percent in the year 2020 and 2021, respectively. And the equity fund, uh, it offers exposure mainly to equities, uh, both local uh, and offshore uh, listed equities. In terms of the performance, uh, again, due to equities volatility, we see for the year 2021, the performance was minus 8.7%, and the annualized for the last six years is minus 5.7%. Then we look at the investment options and you being uh, an investor, uh, what factors should you be considering when making these investment decisions? So here we have a, a stepwise decision making process where you can be able to ask yourself as a potential investor, one, what is your risk appetite? This means how would you react if there is some uncertainty or some volatility in your returns? So is your risk appetite low, medium, or high? The next, you need to determine what are your liquidity needs. How soon do you require access to the funds? Do you require you know, a monthly uh, access to some of the funds? Or can you be able to lock this in for a prolonged period? This is closely related to the investment horizon. So for how long do you want to invest? Is it less than one year, medium between two and five years, or long term for more than five years? So these three factors will determine what should be your expected return. And you should be comparing that expected return with uh, inflation and the risk-free uh, assets return such as the T-bills and the treasury bonds. Uh, then finally you need to evaluate the fund manager's experience and professionalism. Uh, how long have they been doing this and what quality of services do they offer? So just to make uh, the decision you know a bit more concrete we've tried to look at uh, some of the fixed income products in Kenya so going through this quickly, uh, the first column has treasury bills and treasury bonds. These are securities issued by the government and deemed to be low risk. The treasury bills are short term and the treasury bonds are long term. Uh, then the next column we have deposits, bank deposits and uh, micro microfinance and SACO deposits. So you are putting your money in private institutions, which means that apart from the risk you're getting, you need to evaluate these particular institutions for credit risks. Then in the middle, we have uh, money market mutual funds, such as the Britain Money Market Fund, and discretionary wealth accounts. So for the money market funds, these offer high liquidity. You can be able to withdraw your money, I think, after investing for two weeks. And they also do offer high risk-adjusted returns. Uh, for discretionary wealth accounts, they give uh, the client a bit of discretion as to what they should invest in, and the fund manager should be able to mitigate uh, against risks through superior research and management. Uh, then uh, the next column, we have uh, cash and loan to friends. So if you do not want to actively invest, you can either keep your money in cash or for some people, you can give a loan to a friend. But for those who have actually loaned to friends, I'm sure most of us have stories about trying to get your money back. So that comes with a bit of high risk. Uh, keeping your money in cash, uh, this is highly liquid, but there's going to be low return and also the risk uh, that someone uh, can be able to steal the cash. Finally, we have corporate securities being commercial papers and corporate bonds. So again, these are securities issued by private uh, institutions and apart from just evaluating the return, uh, then you also need to eval evaluate the credit risk of the institution and given that you may not be able to 
uh, sell these securities before maturity, uh, you also need to look at liquidity risks. So in summary, what uh, should we be telling our investors uh, in terms of the way forward? So one, if you are a long-term investor with an eye for the future and you have an appetite for risk, then you should buy equities. So the year 2022 offers an opportunity to accumulate uh, fundamentally sound companies at cheap valuations for long-term investors. And uh, the equities market uh, is expected to rebound uh, after the year 2022. Uh, if you are a risk-averse investor, you want more or less constant returns, uh, then you, we recommend that you buy fixed income products. We expect short-term rates to average between 7 and 10% uh, in the year, uh, whereas longer-term rates uh, should range between 11 and 14 uh, percent in the year 2022. So that is the end of my presentation uh, and then finally I can say we are grateful members for all the business support that we received this past year. We wish to reaffirm our commitment to your financial well-being as we continue to be your partner of choice in all matters investments. Uh, thank you chair and back to you. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Njunge. Unit holders, <clears throat> now I'd like to welcome uh, our Chief Financial Officer, Mr. Moses Kangethe, to present to you the financial report for the year ended 31st December 2021. Thank you, Chair, <clears throat> and good morning, unit holders. My name is Moses Kangethe, CFO. I'll take you through the financial reports for 2021. And here I'll talk to you through the income statement or the statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income and the statement of financial position for the four funds. Uh, that's a Britain Money Market Fund, the Britain Equity Fund, the Britain Balanced Fund and the Britain Bond Plus Fund in that order. So starting with the Money Market Fund, um, unit holders through the year, we uh, provide here a summary statement and I believe you have the detailed accounts but here we provide a summary statement of the performance in terms of the income and the expenses of the fund and the net profit uh, for the period. So you will note during the year uh, the company, uh, the fund, the money market fund grew the income by 35 percent from 993 million shillings uh, to 1.342 billion shillings. Over the same period, the service fees and um, unit holders, these service fees are, are fees paid for the management of the fund, fees paid to the other service providers, and um, uh, for this year, uh, also uh, compliance with IFRS, uh, some provisions for any um, potential losses uh, on, uh, on, 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 the, on the investments to comply with the IFRS. So these service fees for this money market fund reduced by 53, increased by 53 percent uh, from 317 million to 483 million shillings. Over that period, the fund made a profit before tax of 859 million shillings, uh, which was a growth of 27 percent over the period. So if I take you to the statement of financial position, unit holders, uh, this shows the position uh, of the fund as at December uh, 2021 and the comparative position for 2020. And uh, you've been taken through the makeup of the investment, so I'll not go through line by line, but on an overall basis, the total assets of the fund grew by 23% from 10.5 billion to 12.872 billion shillings. Uh, the liabilities of the fund, which are uh, a small portion of fees that had not been paid by the end of the year, uh, was 45.759 million shillings, um, which grew from 36.478 the previous period. Uh, the fund value, which is the net assets attributable to the uh, unit holders, grew by 23% uh, from 10.469 billion to 12.826 billion shillings. I'll then go to the equity fund. 
And I'll start with a statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income as well. For this fund, as has been alluded to um, earlier, uh, it makes uh, income from its uh, interest and dividends and also fair value gains or losses uh, from the stock markets. And uh, over the year uh, 2021, there was a, a loss of, or total costs uh, from the losses uh, in the stock market by that to that eight, of, of that 8.287 million shillings, which was uh, some improvement from the previous period, which was a loss of 57.79 million shillings. The service fees in line with the fund value reduced from 45.6 million shillings to 26.84 million shillings. Overall, the fund made a loss in the period of 65.127 million shillings, which was um, uh, an improvement of 37% from the 103.454 million shillings in 2020. From a statement of financial position, which is the balance sheet at the end of the year, the fund value was 800, or the total assets were 868.98 million shillings. Uh, and um, that was a 17% decline from 1 billion and 41 uh, million shillings in 2020, December. The liabilities uh, were uh, 1.862, which um, similar to the other funds, was the net uh, liabilities at the end of the period for fees incurred in the period but yet to be paid as at December. So the fund value or the net assets of the fund were 867.12 million shillings, which was a 17% decline uh, from 1 billion and 38 million shillings the previous period. Going on to the balanced fund, and uh, this is also a fund that is exposed to both um, uh, interest bearing and uh, uh, equity investments. For this fund, uh, there was a 7.7 .7 million uh, uh, negative income in the period. Uh, the service fees declined by 27% for, uh, from 23.83 million shillings to 17.364 uh, million shillings. Uh, over that period, uh, the fund made a loss of uh, 25.077 million shillings um, which was a 56% uh, uh, decline uh, from the 16.03 uh, million shillings loss in the previous period. From a statement of financial position perspective, uh, this is the assets and the liabilities of the fund. Uh, the fund uh, total assets uh, were 502.1 million shillings, uh, which was a 15% dip from the 592 million reported in 2020. Um, the net assets attributable to the unit holders over the period or at the end of December were 500.566 uh, million shillings from the 590.499 million reported in the previous period. I'll finally take you through the bond plus fund and I'll also start with a statement of uh, profit or loss and other comprehensive income. And for this statement, uh, uh, for this fund, the total income uh, for the period was 8.265 million shillings uh, compared to the 14.442 million the previous period. Uh, service fees were 3.053 million shillings uh, compared to the 5.254 million the previous period. Similar to all the other funds, uh, all our funds are uh, tax, uh, income tax exempt. So you will note that there was no tax expense for this fund and for all the other funds uh, that I have reported previously. Uh, the total comprehensive income or the profit uh, for the period was 5.212 million shillings uh, compared to the 9.188 million shillings the previous period. So I'll take this uh, chance as well to take you through the balance sheet or the statement of financial position for the bond plus fund. This fund had total assets of 75.491 million shillings compared to the 93.5 million the previous period. Uh, it also had current liabilities of 277 and unit holders just to uh, provide context, uh, these are fees uh, incurred in the period but yet to be paid at the end of the year. Uh, the net assets attributable to the unit holders at the end of the year were 75.214 million shillings compared to the 93.156 million shillings the previous period. 
Thank you so much, uh, unit holders, and I'll take it back to, to the chair. Thank you, Mr. Kangete. I'd like now to invite our external auditors, PWC, represented by Mr. Daniel Kilu, to present to you the report for the year ended 31st December 2021. Thank you, Chair, and good, good morning, unit holders. Report on the financial statements. We audited the financial statements of Britam Money Market Fund, Britam Equity Fund, Britam Balanced Fund, Britam Bond Plus Fund, which the CFO has just taken you through, and those financial statements comprise the statement of financial position at 31st December 2021, the statements of profit or loss and other comprehensive income, statement of changes in unit holders' balances, and statement of cash flows for the year then ended, and notes to the financial statements, which include a summary of significant accounting policies. In our opinion, the financial statements give a true and fair view of the financial position of the funds at 31st December 2021 and of their financial performance and cash flows for the year then ended in accordance with international financial reporting standards and the requirements of the Capital Market Act Collective Investment Schemes Regulations of 2001. Our audit report was signed by CPA Banis Kimashia practice number 1457 and dated 31st March 2022. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Mr. Kilu. We now move to the next matter, which is on the confirmation of trustees and custodians. I now take this opportunity to invite our trustee, KCB Bank, who are represented by Ms. Flores Nduba, to give their confirmation. Thereafter, our custodian, Standard, Standard Chartered Bank, represented by Ms. Juliet uh, Kerry Mugambi, who will also give their confirmation. Thank you, Chair. Good morning, unit holders. As mentioned by the Chair, my name is Florence Nduba, Head of Investor Services at KCB Bank, the corporate trustees of the Britam Unit Trust Funds. It is my pleasure to join you this morning at this AGM I will proceed to give a brief presentation for the year under review. The detailed report of the trustee is contained in the annual report for the year ended 31st December 2021, and this has been circulated to you, and we will take it as read. My presentation will cover a brief overview of the Britam Unit Trust Funds and the corporate trustees' confirmations. Allow me to briefly touch on the Unit Trust Funds uh, which we are speaking about this morning. The Money Market Fund uh, is one of the four funds under the Britain Unit Trust Scheme, and the objective of this fund is to achieve a high level of yield while protecting your, the investor's capital. We also have the Balanced Fund, which is part of these funds, and the investment objective of the Balanced Fund is to achieve a reasonable level of income and enhance capital growth. The equity fund uh, is uh, one of the other funds uh, which forms part of the Britam Unit Trust funds, and it seeks to offer superior returns over the medium to longer term by maximizing long-term capital growth. The Bond Plus fund is a fourth fund under this scheme, and it seeks to achieve a high level of current income subject to preserving the capital together with the ability to create capital appreciation. Unit holders, you have had uh, the investment strategies adopted by your fund manager to ensure that all these investment objectives are achieved for each of the four funds. I wish to confirm to you that there were no changes to the incorporation documents for the four funds during the year under review. Um, unit holders, we have a number of service providers looking after your funds. Uh, beginning with KCB, the corporate trustee, and our role is to provide uh, oversight and safeguard the assets of these funds. We do also have the Britam Asset Managers, who are your fund managers, and they support the trustee in undertaking the investments. The overall responsibility for investments and performance of the funds lies with the trustee. 
We also have your custodian, who is Standard Chartered Bank of Kenya, and they will be tabling their confirmations to you shortly. And uh, Standard Chartered is the custodian of the funds, and they are charged with safekeeping the funds' assets. Unit holders, during the year under review, I wish to confirm that there were no changes in the service providers who are managing the funds, and uh, there were no changes to the contracts as well. Members, uh, I want to confirm to you that the operations of the funds were indeed carried out in accordance with the requirements of the capital markets regulations for collective investment schemes, as well as the trust deed and rules. And finally, uh, my confirmation to you is that we have assessed the fund's ability to continue as a going concern. And as your trustee, we have not come across any material issues that we wish to bring to your attention, which may cast doubt upon the ability of the funds to continue as a going concern. Thank you, members, um, for your attention. We are really grateful for the support you have given us during this past year and we will be available to respond to any questions that you may have uh, at the appropriate time during this AGM. Thank you, and back to you, Chair. Uh, thank you, uh, Trustee, and thank you, uh, Chair. Uh, good morning, unit holders. As introduced earlier, uh, my name is Juliet uh, Kerry Mugambi, a representative of Standard Chartered Bank, and specifically the custodian um, of these funds. So I'll table the report, that is a custodian report. You will find the report in your financial uh, statements. So in accordance with the capital markets, uh, collective investment schemes, uh, regulations 2001, uh, that is the regulations and the custody agreement uh, between ourselves, uh, that is Standard Chartered Bank Kenya Limited and Britam Asset uh, Managers Kenya Limited as a fund uh, managers, uh, we do confirm the following as pertains the financial year end, uh, 31st December 2021. So we have discharged uh, the duties uh, prescribed for a custodian under Regulation 35 of the regulations uh, to the Britam uh, Money Market Fund, uh, Britam Equity Fund, uh, Britam Balanced Fund, and the Britam uh, Bond Plus Fund. Uh, in addition, uh, we have held the assets, uh, namely uh, for the Britam Money Market Fund, uh, the Britam Equity Fund, uh, the Britam Balanced Fund, and the Britam Bond Plus Fund. And these include uh, title deeds, uh, securities, and income uh, that accrue thereof uh, to the order of the fund manager and facilitated the transfer uh, exchange or delivery in accordance uh, with the instructions uh, received uh, from the fund uh, manager in accordance uh, to the provisions of the capital markets uh, collective investment schemes uh, regulations uh, 2001. So again, thank you members uh, and unit holders. We do confirm your assets are safe. Uh, we thank you for the support uh, that you have provided us as custodian. And now I hand it back uh, to the chair. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Nduba and uh, Ms. Mugambi. Before we consider the formal business of the meeting, I'd like uh, to remind unit holders that the, that the resolutions put to the vote at this meeting shall be passed by a poll. Participating unit holders shall receive an SMS or email prompt to cast their votes. Unit holders can vote in favor of, against, or abstain from the resolution. The results shall be published on the company's website within 24 hours and the outcome shall be deemed to be a resolution of this meeting enforceable immediately. Now to the formal business of the, of the meeting where, where we have the adoption of the audited financial statement. The annual audited financial statements for the year ended 31st December 2021, including the reports of the external auditor Custodian and trustees have been presented to the unit holders. Uh, unit holders, while the format of this meeting shall differ slightly compared to the traditional format, we have taken significant measures to ensure that it mirrors our usual annual general meeting structure. Unit holders, uh, we had already been given an opportunity to ask questions and seek clarifications with regard to the financial statements and resolutions being presented and proposed. 
responses were provided to all unit holders who asked questions and sought clarification as was provided in the notice for this meeting. However, we shall give an opportunity to address any questions you may have during the question and answer session. So to participate, please send your question using the ask question button on your dashboard or via the USSD code star 483 star 253 hash. Before we embark to receive and respond to the questions received, we shall provide you with the guidelines on how to cast your votes for the resolution placed before this AGM. Kindly note that the voting will close at 12 p.m. today. To vote for resolutions, use the vote button on your dashboard or via the USSD code star 483 star 253 hash. Kindly note that you will not be able to access the USSD code or receive SMS notification if you have blocked promotional messages. Kindly watch the following video to guide you on the voting process. Welcome to the Electronic Annual General Meeting of Britain Unit Trust Funds. Karibuni kwenye mkutano mkuu mwaka wa Britain Unit Trust Funds. Mkutano wa huu mwaka unafanyika kupitia mitandao ya kielektroniki. Once voting is open, those eligible to vote will receive a prompt on their mobile phones or email asking them to key in and dial the USSD code on their mobile phones. They will be required to follow the prompts to cast their vote. Those with multiple accounts and holding proxies on behalf of other shareholders will be prompted to vote for the various accounts consecutively. Upige jikura utakapoanza, yeyote alihitimu kupija kura atapokea ujumbe katika simu au barua pepe akihitajika kuweka kodi aliyopokea awali. Utahitajika kufuata maelekezo ili kupija kura yako. Kwa wale walio na akaunti zaidi ya moja au aliyetumwa kuwakilisha mwanahisa, yani proxy, watapata maelekezo ya kupiga kura kwa akaunti zote mtawalia. The voting process will be as follows. Upiga jikura utafanyika kama ifuatavyo. Star 483 star 253 hash star 483 star 253 hash Preferred language. You will be prompted to select your preferred language. Lugha utapewa fursa kuchagua lugha inayokufaa A choose language chagua lugha 1 English 2 Kiswahili Once you select your preferred language the next prompt will be as follows Mwanachama atakapochagua lugha atapata jibu lifuatalo Welcome to the Britain Unit Trust Funds AGM reply with 1 Karibu kwa mkutano wa Britain Unit Trust Funds. Bonyeza moja. Once you respond, you shall receive the following prompt. Mwanachama atapata jibu lifuatalo. Accounts registered with your number are listed below. Reply with 1 to vote using the first listed account. Account iliyosajiliwa kwa nambari yako imeorodheshwa hapa chini. Bonyeza moja kupiga kura. Once you respond, you shall receive the following prompt. Mwanachama atapata jibu lifuatalo. To receive, consider, and if deemed fit, adopt the annual report and financial statements for the year ended 31st December 2021 together with the auditor's reports thereon. Kupokea, kuzingatia, na ikionekana inafaa kupitisha ripoti ya mwaka na tarifa za fedha Kwa mwaka ulioisha tarehe 30 mosi December mwaka 2021 pamoja na ripoti ya wakaaguzi. Reply with 1 if in favor. Reply with 2 if against. Reply with 3 to abstain. Bonyeza moja kukubali. Bonyeza mbili kukataa. Bonyeza tatu kuazilia. Continue following the same prompts for all other resolutions. If you have multiple accounts, you shall be prompted to vote until you complete the process for all accounts. 
endelea kufuata mchakato kwa hoja zingine. Mwanachama anaweza kurudia mchakato mzima ili kupiga kura tena ikiwa ana akaunti zaidi ya moja. Thank you. Your vote has been registered. Asante. Kura yako imesajiliwa. Once the vote is made, you shall receive this final prompt confirming that your vote has been accepted. Mwanachama atakapomaliza kupiga kura, atapata jibu la mwisho kuthibitisha kwamba kura yake imekubaliwa. You will receive an SMS with a live stream link. Once you click the link, select the vote button on the dashboard and proceed as preferred. Click the vote for motions button to complete voting. Wanachama watapokea ujumbe mfupi na kiunga chao cha kutazama mkutano. Mara tu kibonyeza kiunga hicho utapata kitufe cha vote. Bonyeza kitufe na baadaye bonyeza chaguzi za kupiga kura kulingana na chaguo lako. Mara tu itakapokamilika, bonyeza kitufe cha vote for motions kukamilisha upigaji kura. Closing of voting will be announced by the chairman. Kufungwa kwa upigaji kura utatangazwa na mwenyekiti. Results of the resolutions voted on will be published on the company's website within 24 hours following conclusion of the AGM. Matokeo ya uchaguzi yatachapishwa kwenye wavuti ya kampuni kati ya masaa 24 kufuatia hitimisho la huu mkutano. We can now proceed to address questions received from unit holders. We have received uh, three questions. Uh, the first question is from uh, Junior Amenya Ngei. Is there a Britam online platform? The second question from Rene Wanjiru Mwangi. What are these reports going around about making losses? Should we anticipate a loss of savings and investments? And also a third question from Josh Ocheno Ambuso. Why has the why has the money market daily yield not been constant? And I'll, uh, for these questions, I'd like to request uh, our investment manager, Mr. John Chijunge, to address them. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair. So I will address the last two questions. And for the first one, I'll request our CFO to address it. So starting with the question from Rene Wanjiro Mwangi. There are reports uh, going around about uh, making losses. Should we anticipate a loss of savings and investments? So my answer to this is no. And the reason for that is that Britam as an entity is very different from the various funds. So the reports which have been in the media regard uh, Britam Holdings and uh, the financial uh, performance of Britam as a company. However, uh, from the report I've given you as the fund manager, you are able to see the actual investments uh, which the various funds uh, have put the money into. Uh, from the report by the CFO, you actually, you're actually able to see the financial statements for each individual funds showing that they have different uh, financials from the holdings and from the reports by the corporate uh, trustee and also by the custodian, they have clarified that the investments for the various funds are actually held by the custodian. So all these investments we've done in treasury bonds and deposits and equities, they are not even held uh, by Britam they are held by the custodian being standard chartered. So the performance of the various funds will depend solely on the performance of those investments for which is, each fund has made, and they are totally unconnected with the performance of Britam Holdings as a company. The second question is why has the money market daily yield not been constant? Uh, and this is a question by Joash Otieno Ambuso. So the yield for the money market is determined by the income generated by the underlying assets on a daily basis. So every day we will calculate 
the in income earned by those assets. And then from that, we calculate a net yield that we published, ev publish every day in the newspapers. This yield can vary from day to day based on any changes in the underlying investments. So where do these changes come from? So any time where we have uh, an inflow or outflow from the fund, this usually leads to either an uplifting uh, of an investment or an additional investment being made. And this will change the composition of that portfolio and thus will change the daily uh, net yield. Uh, again, over the, co the normal course of uh, investment, we will have some of our uh, securities maturing. So let's say on any particular day you can have a deposit or a treasury bond which has matured. So after it matures, then we will take those proceeds and reinvest them in a different security. And this again will lead to a change in composition and a change in the net yield. So I hope that answers the two questions. For the first question by Junior Ameangay, which was, is there a Britam online platform? I will request our CFO uh, to answer that question. Thank you so much, uh, George. And um, I'll respond to the question as to whether there is a Britam online platform. And I'm very happy to report that, yes, there is. We actually have a Britam app, and we also have a customer portal. So you can access the app uh, via the Play Store for Android phones and the Apple uh, Store for iPhones. So you could actually go there and look for the Britam app and uh, download that. You'll be able to access a couple of services as I'll talk about them later on. The customer portal uh, is uh, customer connect, one word, customer connect dot Britam dot com. So if you go there as well, uh, you will be able to access a couple of uh, um, uh, services. So the digital platform will allow you, number one, to withdraw, uh, to top up on your investments, to switch, uh, view your statements, and all that at the comfort of your home or even your office or even on the road, wherever you are on your phone. Um, please uh, uh, take time now to go in and look for the uh, Britam app on the, on the Android store and the Apple store, and also link in uh, to the customer connect, oneword.britam.com. Thank you. Thank you, George. Thank you, Moses. Thank you, unit holders, uh, for your questions will not be able to respond to all questions raised now due to time limitations. We therefore encourage you to continue sending all your questions and once received, they shall be collected and responses thereto published on our website after the meeting. Unit holders, we shall now proceed to the voting session for the first resolution for the, of the meeting. The resolution shall be passed by a poll and all unit holders who registered for the meeting, receive the SMS prompts to cast their votes. I now read the resolution to the meeting. To receive, consider, and if deemed fit, adopt the annual report and financial statements for the year ended 31st December 2021, together with the auditor's report thereon. Ms. Jumba, do we have proposals and seconders for the resolution for all funds? Yes, Chair, we do. The resolution has been proposed by Muthoki Lumumba and seconded by Margaret Wambui Mutitu for the Britam Money Market Fund. The resolution has been proposed by Geoffrey Bethwell Maoga and seconded by Joseph Kimotho Ndirangu for the Britam Equity Fund. The resolution has been proposed by Catherine Mudoni Mukunya and seconded by Geoffrey Bethwell Mauga for the Britam Bond Plus Fund. And the resolution has been proposed by Jude Robbins Wahome and seconded by Victor Gamau Maina for the Britam Balanced Fund. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, unit holders. I'll now ask the Secretary 
to confirm if there's any other business for discussion for which due notice was given. Thank you, Chair. I confirm that there is no other business for discussion of which due notice has been given. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Jumba. There being no other business of which due notice has been given, I take this opportunity to thank you once again for attending the meeting. That concludes the business of the 16th Annual General Meeting. I thank you for your attendance and I declare the meeting officially closed. I now invite Ms. Judy Kitonga to give us a closing prayer. Thank you, Chair. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we say thank you. We called upon your name before the start of the meeting. We asked you to be with us, and we are truly grateful for seeing us to the end of this meeting. We pray, O oh Lord, that you continue to bless Britain and enlarge our territories. And therefore, right now, we also pray that you perfect everything that concerns each and every one of us. As we go along with the rest of the day, we pray that you'll be with us and that your presence will continuously be with us every moment. We thank you, we worship you, and we give you all the glory. We pray all this trusting and believing in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Making payments or contributions.